All right, how's it going, guys? It's been a while since we've done one of these unboxing-style reviews, so here goes another one. This is Kinetic's new 148-scale IA-58 Pukara. Kind of an interesting little aircraft. Probably gained most of its fame during the uh, conflict in South America. We won't take any political sides or trigger anybody with terminology, but yes. So this, I don't believe, has been released in plastic, at least in 48 scale, ever before. There have been a couple of resin kits that have come out. I think there's actually one that's due to come out. We will see... Well, I don't really plan to get that one because I have this now, but um, hopefully this will give you guys a bit of a look as to what's in the box and you can decide which one's best for you. So, boxes, nothing too interesting on it. A couple of decal schemes. Um, Argentinian Air Force, kind of the iconic uh, Argentinian Air Force scheme from the uh, armed conflict. And in another one here with a kind of a warthog sh uh, nose art on it from Uruguay. Decals by Cartograph, de um, decals designed by Two Bobs. Anyway, um, let's go into the box and see what we get. I am going to actually, uh, I haven't been in here yet, but we will open this somehow. open this, put that to the side, and then I'm going to unbag, debag all of these, and we will come back from there so I'm not crinkling plastic forever on camera. So stand by. All right, and we're back. I accidentally recorded this in slow-mo in my last take, so here goes again. After we have everything debagged, we have the instruction sheet here, pretty standard for Kinetic. It's their normal kind of a photo or photocopied book booklet kind of thing. Nothing crazy or fancy, but completely sufficient for delivering information. A little bit of a blurb on that, some tools, health and safety. We don't really care about that. And we straight in. At the top, a uh, bit of an aftermarket services request thing. If you do lose something or if you break something, this will help you along with the parts map to request replacement parts. Color callouts in uh, both federal standard, um, Ammo, Alejo, Mr. Color, Tamiya, and Humbrol. And straight in with the build. So starting off, seats, a little bit of photo etch going on, cockpit tub coming together, seats going in, painting guide at the bottom, nothing crazy. Then we're into the drilling of wing hardpoints. Uh, don't overlook this or you will struggle later in the build. Opening up some holes, I presume for both the central pylon and also the wing pylons, uh, a couple holes on the side of the fuselage, on the other fuselage half, looks like uh, something to cut out at the bottom as well, probably for a landing light or something of that nature. Nose gear bay going onto the bottom of the cockpit tub, everything going together, a little bit of sidewall detail going in, everything closing up. Straight on with the wings, then we have left and right wings, undercarriage bay going in, looks like it's a single piece, so that will be convenient. Then we have the rear piece with the, uh, I presume that's the exhaust, so we'll take a look at that. Cowlings, two halves, um, kind of a blank on the front. I don't know if the engine is really visible on these aircraft. I'm not very familiar with them, but we will see. Um, the pylons going on, other side, same thing, nothing too crazy there. Then we have the a little bit of cockpit detail going in, looks like a brace of some kind, as well as the combing. That all going together, the rear cockpit um, kind of decking, combing thing going on. Tails going on, tails and halves. Some under wing details, looks like these are potentially like uh, actuators for the flaps going in there. Then we have the main gear, the nose gear, everything going together like that. Then undercarriage uh, bay doors 
and here are the here are the flaps a little bit of assembly on that then going to, straight into the wings looks like they might be posable we will look kind of af as we look at the parts to see if that's the case then we have uh, some smaller airframe details some some small vents looks like some small antennas under the fuselage more kind of blade antennas and all that going on canopy looks like two pieces of photo etch for the canopy rails a little bit of a side view to see to make you make, make sure you get those lined up properly front windscreen both props uh option to have the canopy open i don't know how it will fit closed but we'll report back as we do the build Moving on, we have some photo etch going onto the tails. Looks like some kind of static discharge whip type things. A couple on the tail planes, looks like a couple on the wings and also on the fin itself. Next we have pylons. We have the central pylon, a couple tanks, small tank, big tank, and some triple ejector racks. And that's it. You do not get any ordnance with this, which is a little bit surprising, but I'm sure you would be able to find the necessary bombs or missiles or whatever these things carried in your spares box or in the aftermarket. Therefore, the actual ordnance kind of loadout uh, map here is not very interesting to look at. Just the central pylon, big small tanks, and the triple ejector racks. Next up into painting guides, we have the Argentinian Air Force one, which kind of everyone's familiar with and that kind of sort of uh, like sandy brown and tan and a little bit of green scheme. And the Uruguay Air Force one with the Warthog, I think that's a Warthog, on the nose art. Yeah, and that's it. Nothing too crazy there. In the instructions, you will also have this little sheet of decals. Uh, not a very extensive sheet, but full color, well printed. Designed by uh, two bobs, printed by Cartograph. Don't expect any issues with these. This uh, nose art will be interesting to see how that wraps around. And we have both schemes, nothing crazy, roundels, flags, serial numbers, a little bit of stencil detail. Most of this goes around the front fuselage, I believe, like around under the canopy that says like the rescue, the cautions and all that. That's that, nothing crazy there. And this very small sheet of photo etch, which I will attempt to show you guys in the reflection which has the canopy rails, the bracing of some kind for the uh, cockpit. Looks like some stiffener plates, also those static whips. Uh, for the tail and the wings, nothing too crazy there. This is very thin though, so be careful not to bend this in your build or in storage. Okay, <clears throat> and next we are off into the sprues. Uh, since it's on top, we will look at the clear parts first. As with basically all of Kinetic's newer releases, the clear parts are nothing you need to worry about. They are very clear, very well molded, very well defined um, kind of ledge around the canopy or around the uh, framing and the clear. So if you choose to mask them by yourself, that should present no issue. Then we have some clear pieces here. I think these are... I have no idea what those are. The HUD, uh, beacons, landing lights, all that nature of things. But yeah, very well molded. Comes in its own separate bag, so that's good. Okay, and straight in with the biggest, kind of the most important sprue. This is the fuselage halves and the tails and a little bit of um, kind of fuselage add-ons. These are the flaps. Uh, one piece did fall off, it's in the bottom of the box. Make sure you check your bags. When you take your sprues out, just make sure you're not throwing anything away. Straight off looking, there is a nice mixture of raised and recessed detail. Recessed detail is very even, very sharp, even as it goes towards kind of these curves and edges. Nothing to complain about there. The raised detail is also very sharp. Edges are very well defined. You can see that in this uh, kind of an access panel and also around these stiffener plates around the cannons. Yeah. Very well done. Tail, the, uh, the rudder is molded in kind of the neutral position. If, I don't know if these aircraft kind of sway left and right or if they just kind of stay in the middle. Uh, but if they do, 
kind of an easy cut around this very well-defined edge and set that to any angle that your heart desires. Moving on. This is the other large sprue, obviously the wings, the uh, tops, yeah, the tops and the bottom. The bottom comes in this one kind of long piece by itself that will hopefully help to align everything. Uh, the inside has some bracing, as you can see. Uh, all ejector pin marks are on the inside, nothing too deep that you'd worry about coming through on the other side. Again, very nicely and sharply molded recessed detail. Pylons up here, cockpit tub has some nice raised sharp detail in there. This is some more pylons here. The instrument clusters, nothing crazy. I'm sure one of the aftermarket manufacturers, Quinta or somebody else, will come out with a 3D panel soon. Very eager to give those a try. Seats, nothing crazy. The nose gear bay, nice depth. Sharp detail, a little bit of molded cabling, obviously the ribbing and stiffeners, um, all very well molded. Main gear bay, a little bit of molded cabling. Otherwise, looks very nice. And single piece too, so no need to do multiple walls sandwiched together, hope, hope, hoping that it's square. Top wings as well. The outer, um, I guess these are flaps, are molded as part of the wing, so they will be in the kind of the stowed position, but the other flaps, the inner ones kind of are molded separately, so those might actually be posable. Won't really know until we actually start this. Next up, we have this small sprue, which includes the main gear legs, the nose gear legs, the nose wheels, or the nose wheel, and some miscellaneous little details, cockpit details, looks like antennas down here. These are some actuators for the gear legs. And I don't know what those, oh, those are the, uh, the, the undercarriage doors and some other small details as well. Again, everything well molded, very sharp, no flash whatsoever. Windshield wiper for the front windscreen is there. Yeah, good stuff. Last off, we have two kind of matching sprues, so we'll only look at one, you get two of these. So if we look at one of these, get that out of the way. Oh. So you have the prop, you have the main wheels, you have the kind of the, I think this is the front of the engine actually. It looks like everything's, you won't actually be able to see any part of the actual engine. Uh, the, the nacelles, both halves, this is kind of that rear cover that goes over the nacelle main gear bay doors do have an ejector pin mark right in the middle right there which is not great but at least it's not among all this other detail that you, it would be impossible to get rid of so maybe a little chiseling or scraping you should be able to get rid of that but it is very light so if you're thick with your paint you might not even see it actually so do with that as you will a little bit of detail about um, like the, uh, the ejection pole, some other small details. These, these look like the sway braces for the triple ejector rack. It is very interesting you don't get bombs with this or any other form of ordnance. Uh, not really being familiar with these, I don't know what they carry. If you are planning to do this build though, I recommend trying to pick up this book. Honestly, you will not need any other reference if you have this book. It is hard to find, but if you look around, it is available. Uh, Picara Story by Dr. Ricardo. I don't know how to say that, but very extensive history. You get uh, kind of development of the aircraft. You get all sorts of experimental schemes. You get profiles, kind of where it's all started, prototypes, a little bit of history, some line drawings as well, um, early prototypes and straight off into one of the early schemes, testing, all that. As you go through though, you will find more uh, export stories, you get photos. I haven't seen many of these photos online, so you will get some very interesting history here. Three view drawings, obviously from the conflict. You see some uh, war photos there. And then moving on, colors, reference, battle damage, all of that, some experimental schemes, some very colorful schemes. 
um, kind of going from there. But if you go through, there is plenty of walk around photos of details. So if you do wish to super detail this, there is plenty for you to reference on that. Gear bay or gear legs, gear bays, and weapons and stores. So this will help you to track down some ordnance for your otherwise completely unloaded Fukara. But yeah. Anyway, uh, that's that's about it. Um, do intend to build this. Don't know when I'll start it. Don't know when I'll finish it. But uh, probably do a follow-up video or photos on the page at some point. But if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna, if you're serious about building a Pukara, get this book. If you can find it, otherwise, maybe beg one of your friends that has it to borrow it. But anyway, yeah, cool. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any comments about the kit, or if you built it, or you're building it, let me know. Very interested to hear what you say, or what you're doing with it. Cool guys, take care.